So it's seldom that we have an act before Parliament with only one riding. So I appreciate uh, everyone having uh, C-17 on this agenda. And I appreciate that uh, many members in the House, maybe all of them except the Minister and Parliamentary Secretary, may know very little about this bill because it's not, it's just related to one riding and that's totally understandable. Um, so I'll try and explain it to make it clear to people uh, what they would be, will be voting on. The Act simply removes four issues that were put in place through S6 in a totally inappropriate process. And the four issues are timelines, the reassessments of ongoing projects, uh, the ministerial policy direction, and a delegation to the Yukon government of that authority. Although First Nations negotiated all the other changes, they weren't offered the opportunity to negotiate these four. So for the th other 336 members who do not live in the Yukon, I'll try to put this bill into context. On February 14, 1973, the Chiefs of the Yukon went to Ottawa and presented Prime Minister Elliot Trudeau a paper entitled, Together Today for Our Children Tomorrow, which started the land claim and self-government process in the Yukon. The no negotiations went on for 20 years until the modern treaty, the Umbrella Final Agreement, was signed on May 29, 1993, between the three orders of government, federal, territorial, and First Nation. And the UFA is constitutionally protected, so not even we, as legislators, can change it. Truly, a collaborative, negotiated effort, now sometimes used around, across Canada and around the world. But remember, it took 20 years. Part of the treaty prescribed the development of YESA, the Yukon Environmental Socioeconomic Assessment Act. Again, a unique Yukon creation and model with our own assessment act so that, unlike most of the rest of the country, we do not fall under SIA. But it deals with the assessments on the lands of all the governments, the First Nation governments, the Yukon government, the federal government. Creating YESA was again a negotiation exercise by the three partner governments that took 10 years. And YESA was passed in 2003. So far, so good. Now YESA had a built-in five-year review after its fifth year. That review took five years from 2008 to 2012. Now a five-year review is not necessarily supposed to take five years, it's just supposed to happen after five years. But it not only happened after five years, but also took five years. But there was a lot of hard work in those five years. There were 72 recommendations agreed to by the three levels of government after all this hard work. And these were implemented either in S6 or administratively. Once again, so far, so good. But at the 11th hour, near the end of the five years negotiation, the federal government said, oh, we're adding these four new major clauses to Essex, and we're not negotiating them. After 20 years of the three partners working together on the UFA, 10 years working together on the YESA legislation, wouldn't you be outraged if one of your partners said to you, oh yeah, and we're adding four new major clauses and you can't negotiate them. It's probably not in the letter of the law and certainly not in the spirit of the law. So if you have an illegal law or a law created in contravention of the treaty, then it doesn't really matter what's in it, does it? It has to go. We are now a whole new era of partnerships and collaboration with Indigenous people and First Nation governments. And often the industry has led the way in making partnerships with First Nations people. 